The country's rail network is the lifeblood of the economy, yet over the past few years we've seen its steady decline, attributed primarily to vandalism and cable theft. So how can we turn things around? Is it time, for example, to bring back the railway police? Let's speak now to economic analyst Professor Bonke Dumisa. Prof, good afternoon. Welcome to today and thank you very much for your time. I'm posing that question. Is it time to bring back the railways police? Because of the article I read that you wrote last year, late last year, I think it was October 2022, when you were looking at this collapse, the crisis that's facing our rail network, and you grudgingly, and I'm quoting you, grudgingly considered that the presence of the South African Railways Police kept the local trains safe for us in the past. Yes, we don't want to go back there, but looking at the challenges of lawlessness, vandalism and theft on our railway is today, is it something we could reconsider today or you think that would be too controversial? I think people will take it to be too controversial and so maybe we can, we, we can say it cannot be done. But I can, I repeat what I said in that particular article, that with the South African Railway Police, there was Sorry, Prof, law sorry, and Prof, order. sorry, Prof, to continue, we can't see you. Are you able to enable the camera on your device? There you <laughs> sorry, go. sorry, thank sorry, you. sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank sorry. you for that. Yeah, so just, just state, uh, you, you want to repeat something about what you wrote in that article? Yes, I was saying... During the apartheid days, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of the apartheid days, but there were certain things which worked, and we don't have to throw everything out. The South African Railway Police, they were very effective and far better than the South African Police Services. They even went to an extent that if ever you committed some crime, they would do something which didn't make sense, but it, it just made a point. They would even have a person being buried with handcuffs on because the person at the time of death was had committed the crime with, with the railways. So as it is now, you have a situation where people deliberately built their houses within the premises, the present of the South, Af of the, of the South African railways and nothing happens to, to them. And one of the examples I used in that particular article was that I'm from Umlazi, proudly from Umlazi. There was a time, for a long time, there were no trains in Umlazi or out of Umlazi because between, Re between Reunion Station and Zueletu Station in Umlazi, the people decided to have an informal settlement there and they just built mm. literally over the railway line. And the people of Umlazi could not travel through the railways and that cost them a lot of money. This lawlessness in South Africa is not really okay. very good and, for us. And it's, it, and and it's affecting the railway system in many bad ways. Uh, you've just mentioned one example where people settle on top of the, of the railway. I mean, we need a good functioning railway network for our economy, and therefore it might be important to look at how you keep the railway network safe. That's exactly why I am saying let, let us relook at these things. Unfortunately, you have some, I mean, in the case of Umlaz, you had some politicians who were part of the thing. To them, they were not seeing people who are breaking the law. They were seeing potential people who were going to vote for them. And if, as long as politicians do not want to empower the police to do their job in arresting and dealing with people who do these things, then we'll keep on having this problem. I mean, the Transnet explains that between the year 2017 and 2021, they moved from more than 230 million tons a year to less than 180 million tons per year. That cannot really be justified. And that's why we have so many problems and accidents on the road because almost everything that the people need in South Africa has got to be transported by road instead of the rail. And, 
and we need both we, we need both rail and road as a developing economy yes but you find that even with the cars i mean last week last week you had some people who were, who were irresponsible enough to ban one of those car carriers that was a lot of money in the past almost all the cars were transported by rail and that is no longer happening and that's why the the roads throughout the country are deteriorating at this fast speed and it's not good for the economy unfortunately then with transnet i'm sure you've heard of some of the people who work for transnet who have been arrested for sabotaging their own employer i mean some someone selling the diesel which transnet is supposed to be transporting to to customers or the diesel that the transnet is using for its own operations those are all the things that will not be dealt with as long as we keep on justifying why people resort to criminality what would be the i mean we, we've spoken about the controversial railways police uh, idea and you've explained it very well uh, and the police I guess now and again, when they're faced with a particular type of crime, they would set up a special unit. Do you think it's time for Peggy uh, Kele and the Commission of Police, Fani Masimula and them, to start thinking about a special railways unit police? Because short of that political will to really uh, stop the, 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 the decline and, and the collapse of our railway network, there'll be the other political pressure that is beginning to come from the Western Cape for the devolution of, of power to provinces to manage their own railways. And even though I disagree with many of the things that the DA comes up with, thinking that South Africa is not a unitary state and thinking that it is a federal state, on this one I can understand why, where they come from on, on, the, on, the, on this thing. You need more people who are going to, to be there, who are going to be uncompromising in dealing with this thing. There are a number of policemen who have been arrested whilst being involved in the theft of railway cables and, and other properties. So if ever the South African police services come up with a, a unit that will handle this thing, then it means that unit must be prepared that they will be arresting some of their own as the hawks are doing when they are forced to arrest some of their own. Yeah, I mean, you make a point towards the end of your article that has made us talk to you this afternoon about the railway network, that um, the police should show how serious they are by going to the source of some of this vandalism and copper theft, which is closing down the scrapyards. I still stand by that. I've, I've seen so, so many articles and, and, and some of the other information available that people who, who ship, I'm, I'm not talking about one container, we're talking about containers moving out of South Africa, carrying all of those things. And they hardly anyone is arrested. And when people are arrested, you hardly hear about the ultimate end of such prosecution of those people so which tells us then that it's a very easy thing to you can be involved in in the theft of railway property and you call yourself a, a, a scrapyard and if you are arrested you can you can get away with bribing the police and if you are prosecuted it will end up nowhere so it's time we have the political will in south africa to deal with criminality on everything, especially with such critical issues as electricity and the infrastructure. The rail network is very important indeed. Otherwise, our economy will continue to suffer. Uh, that's one aspect that we, we have focused on. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Prof, that uh, 
top of mind for you today as we speak and you look back at that article and we're looking at the situation that has gone from worse to worse. There has been some levels of improvement here and there, here and there by Prasa, you know, small and, and that. And then you're seeing some flow of, of trains in the, in the commuter market in, 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 in metro areas, but there's still more work that needs to be done. But what would that thing be that you think uh, can help us, can help this government, can help Transnet, so that our rail networks become healthy again? If ever Transnet can sort out their railway systems and more railway tracks are back on, online, it will not just help Transnet to be successful, but there are certain things which happened when the, we still had a very successful railway system, where, I mean, I, was, I, I, was, I, I remembered one of the top guys who was swimming in money, and he invited people and they were using railway coaches to move from Houteng to his home in Pumalanga to have a very big wedding and, 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 and party. And that was a lot of money to transnet. That cannot happen now because they, they are just no railway lines. In, in Devon and in other areas, you had some private railway systems where people would be inside the train and move around the province, et cetera. And that was money for the railways. And it was encouraging the private sector to be involved. All those things are not there. So not, so not are you just robbing the South Africans of having a, a reliable railway system for public transport, but you are also rely, robbing them of enjoying tourism in the country because even the blue train is, is struggling to, to do what it used to do in the past because of all these things. So if you mess up with the railway systems, you are affecting the economy of the whole country. One of the things I can say quickly as it is now, one of the success stories of the European Union and the UK and the US is because their railway systems are so perfect, people do not even need to buy cars. And those who have cars don't need to use their cars all the time because of a reliable railway system. Here in South Africa, if you just want to go to a place which is, which is two kilometers away, you cannot enjoy yourself and say, well, I'm not going to drive, I'm mm. going to use yeah. a, a, a train because there is no such. And that robs the economy of the economic growth, significant economic growth prospects. Uh, Let us all work together to make this a dream to come true, that the railway systems in South Africa will go back to where it was during apartheid years. Yeah, it's said indeed it's costing the country quite a bit. As you say, the economy will be going nowhere. I mean, you look at a country, a fellow BRICS country like India, I understand their railway system is one of the biggest in the, in the world in terms of the number of kilometers that it covers. And they carry or ferry about 12 million people every day. <laughs> Can you imagine the structure that they need to do that? Thank you very much, Prof, for your time this afternoon and your reflections. That's uh, Professor Bonke Dumisa just uh, reflecting to us as an independent economist on our ailing rail network as we continue to focus here today on ENCA, on the challenges that are facing our rail network. Some people are saying it's collapsing or it's already collapsed.